Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I haven't had a drink of water yet this morning. My throat's kind of dry. Um, I saw some people yesterday, or last night. I was flipping through some videos. I was all over the place driving everywhere last night. Last night. Um, okay. Let me say this first, then I'll say that. Um, some people, a couple people have given me their phone number to contact them. Um, I'm not avoiding you. If I haven't contacted you, it's be just because I'm always on the run. Um, in a lot of cases, the videos that I'm doing, I film them all within, you know, a couple hour time frame in the morning when I'm getting up and getting around. And then set them to, um, you can set a, a thing on there to have them upload or whatever at a certain time period. Um, that way they fall throughout the day and I can take off and go do what I got to do. And then there's times where I'll do morning prayer. I have to leave. I come back, knock out into the video, leave, come back, knock out another, leave, or do one on the run out in the, in the truck. So it, I'm all over the place. So I'm not avoiding you guys. I just, I'm always running and doing something. Um, but I do have a couple of people that I have phone numbers for. I need to text. I haven't even been able to talk to my buddy Cody in months. Because I've just been running so much. All different directions. Um, this weekend is going to be a great example of that. But, oh, it's raining. Oh, yes, it's raining outside. But that's why I've been uh, really pushing getting the videos done. i uh, got the playlist for Proverbs done. Um, working through the rest, the other half of Romans. Guys, the, you're seeing the videos from Romans that I've, I did in December. I'm about to do Romans 10, and wow, the information that's in there is amazing. And it just, it keeps proving what we've always been saying. And <clears throat> I saw some people last night asking about Paladin for Christ. I reached out to Paladin last night. He emailed me back this morning. Guys, he is doing fantastic. Everything is going great. He just got a command from the Lord. Hey, get off YouTube. Deception's about to get big, so just lay off. It's not even worth it anymore. And so he laid off and he did what the Lord said. And that's great. And not he's not the only one. Other people also have been told, hey, lay back a little bit. Um, I'm sure at some point all of us will be told to lay back. We'll see. Um, I know I'm tired. <laughs> but you know what? If that's the command given, that's what you follow. But he's doing great, guys, in case anybody was asking or wondering. Let's get into some morning prayer. We're going to pray Psalm 22 today. The suffering, praise, and prosperity of the Messiah. And something that gets missed a lot in, in the daily grind of, of what we're doing here or preaching is to make sure we, we constantly remind people of the suffering that Christ endured. And most people, when they hear that word, they think about what he suffered for on the cross. Back up and look at what he suffered. First of all, we don't know what he did before about the age of 30. We don't know what he went through. I mean, there's there's stuff around the world in different cultures that have mentions of him and things that he was doing, which is, that's a very interesting study in and, in and of itself. But like, was it Peter? Was it Peter that said it? I think it was Peter. He said if everything was written down that he did, the whole world couldn't hold the books. Well, Peter only knew him for three and a half years. So how much time frame is he talking about? But to think about the suffering of Christ, you know, after he was baptized, everything started to fall apart. He had to deal with people who had no understanding. He had to deal with people who were full of hate. He was sent to the Jews and they denied him and actually fought him. And he had to witness the depravity that was running across this earth. And plus he was in a physical form that felt pain, felt hunger, felt exhaustion, um, felt heat. And then it felt sorrow and anger. I mean, he had to go through the whole gamut of stuff that we're born into. He had to endure all that stuff. Being a glorified being that doesn't deal with those kinds of things to the degree that I guess we deal with it. And... He had to suffer through that and then stress knowing what was coming and then crucifixion. 
and mocking and then death. I mean, all the stuff that he went through. He went through a lot for us. And it should get you here in the heart. If you're close to him and have a relationship for him, that should bother you. I know when my friends are suffering, it bothers me. I don't like to see that. My Lord suffered, and that bothers me. And, like, I can't get through the story without breaking up. Um, because it bothered me. Because it, it means something. It's important what he did for us on that cross. And at the point that he was about to die, you know, and you can see in the first verse in this psalm, the point he was about to die, the Holy Spirit left him. Because when he was baptized, he was given the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit left him. And so he had to feel... Because the Holy Spirit can't exist where sin is. He was made sin. He had to feel absence from God. When he lived for all time with God. First of all, he had to come down from heaven away from God. And, and then he had to completely be abandoned because of the sin. He had to endure that time frame, bearing that sin, in order to make this way for us to get to heaven. What he did was important, and people make it light. People go out of their way to mock it and to generalize it. And it's not. It's the most important thing that's ever happened on this planet. The gravity of that, the implications behind that, the, the power that is contained within that act is astounding. And it should cause people to pause. It should be something you meditate on every now and then. Because he did that for you. He did that for me. He did that so we could go into heaven and stand in glory. Why would we not make that of the utmost importance? The gospel, the glory that was given to our Lord, the strength, the power. Why would we not acknowledge him? My dad makes a really good point. People pray to the Father for everything and bypass Jesus. They don't talk to him. They don't pray to him. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness, for I never knew you. They never get in a relationship with him. People don't want to have to face the Lord. And I don't know why. That doesn't make sense. If he's the one that created the way, he's the narrow path. He's the narrow gate. You have to go through him. But they do everything they can to go around him. Now we know why the path to destruction is so wide. Because it's all the different ways people have come up with trying to circumvent Jesus. He's the author of our salvation. And now is the time for you to develop some not, some form of relationship with him. I mean, the least you can do if you call yourself a Christian is to acknowledge what he did. Acknowledge the blood sacrifice that he gave for us. It's that blood that's saving you. So let's get into prayer and let's give thanks to our Holy Father for our Lord Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that he did for us. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise for the glory, the mercy, and grace you've shown us, to give you thanks for our Lord Jesus Christ for sending your Son from glory to the earth to live like us, to experience what we experience, and then to die for us, paying for our sins so that we could stand in heaven for you. Thank you, thank you for giving us the ability to enter heaven and to spend eternity showing our appreciation for what you've done for us, for making us a way. Lord Jesus, we can't even begin to fathom what you went through. But the reasons behind it were all based in love. Help us to love like you did. We know we can't achieve it perfectly, but we can get, get there. Help us to love like you love us. Show us this relationship we're supposed to have. Some people don't have this relationship with you. Show us this relationship that we, we should have with you. Give us revelation on the importance of what has been done for us and the importance of what's about to be done. I, I talk to people every day. And you, you see the comments. The, the, just the, the lack of willingness to learn and understand about you and what you've done and what's been done for us. What you did on that cross was important. Father, what you sent him to do was important probably the most important thing. And I just can't get my brain wrapped around how people make it such a light thing. Show us truth. Show us mercy. Show us grace. Show us love. 
and give us the ability and the strength to share that with everyone around us. All the praise, honor, and glory go to you, Lord Jesus, and to you, Father, for the in incredible work that you've done just to save us. Not to mention everything else. Show us the truth. Lead us into truth that we may share the truth with the world in these final days. Father, this morning I'd like to pray Psalm 22, the suffering, praise, and posterity of the, of the Messiah. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear, and in the night season, and I am not silent. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. All those who see me ridicule me. They shoot out the lip. They shake their head saying, he trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. But you are he who took me out of the womb. You made me trust while on my mother's breast. I was cast upon you from birth. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. They gave at me with their mouths like a raging and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death. For dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them, and my, for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far from me. O oh, my strength, hasten to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. You have answered me. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all you offering, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard, My praise shall be of you in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship. All those who go down to the dust shall bow before him, even he who cannot keep himself alive. A posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation. They will come and declare his righteousness to a people who will be born, that he has done this. What an amazing psalm, Father what you have inspired to be written and to be preserved for all this time for us, for this people for this time you have chosen us individually for this time to see this book these writings, to know the things that we know to see the things happening in this world that we see happening right now what an honor what a privilege to be able to be alive now. We, all of us could have been alive at any time in the last 2,000 years. You chose us for now. Why? There was a message you wanted delivered in these final moments. You chose us to deliver it. Look at what you've done in your people. Look at what you've done in the body. I am, never cease to be amazed. And I look so look forward to standing before you with all my brothers and sisters, praising you and giving you honor and glorifying you for all eternity. 
Lord Jesus, it is in your name that I pray. Amen. So, <clears throat> when you read this song, you hear Jesus speaking. Even though it's a psalm of David, you read through it, you hear Jesus speaking. You hear his voice. You hear him saying this prayer. And it ought to hit you. It, it should cause you to stop and think. To stand in reverence of him and what he's done. His act was two th is 2,000 years old in our time frame. But the, the power and the ramifications of it are still fresh. If, not, if anything, they're fresher now than what they were. I can't express in words how I feel about this. Because, well, if you've seen my testimony video, if you knew everything that happened after that the last 20 years, the times I should have died and didn't, the times I should have fallen and didn't, the times I did fall and he carried me out, a lot of people have that testimony. Walking in darkness, even after becoming a Christian, but now that I'm in the light and I look back, I realize I was always in the light. Because he was there with me, leading me through all of it. What an amazing God we have. What an amazing Lord we have. And it is his blood of this new covenant that saves us. That is our atoning gift, our sacrifice, when we get up there. It's his righteousness is our righteousness. His faith is our faith. His love is our love. We need that. And it saddens me to see all the people that just, yeah, it happened. Yeah, Jesus was a guy. I'm not even going to mention all the really bad stuff that people come up with. That's It's just mocking him to his face. How can you do that? It won't be long and we're going to stand before him. All questions will be answered. All truths will be known. We're all going to be found to be wrong on many points. But the fact is, we know our Lord and we love him and we're waiting for him. And he's coming to rescue us and take us out of here. I don't care what anyone believes. He's coming to rescue his people, his brothers and sisters, his co-heirs, his body, his bride from this world and I'm looking forward to it I love you guys I bless you all in Jesus name and I'll see you in the next one